Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 27 of Bumbling Through Birthright, which is the Dungeons and Dragons campaign where we attempt to be adults and rule things and not ruin things, but usually we do the ruining and less of the ruling. If this is your first time here, a welcome, but also check out the playlist so you know what's going on. If you've been here before and just missed the last session, check out the link down below. And with that, let's just get into it. So for this session, we have five player characters. We have Roz, Rainier, Renalfer, Brindis, and Val. If you remember, at the end of the last session, we returned to Holling Holman. Everything was a little tense in the air at the court, and we had some domain turns. Renalfer has been gone for a while, so he needed to catch up with two weeks of downtime. And so he did a week of religious service, and then did some gambling, and did so poorly that he accrued a debt, which he had to pay, so... That didn't really work out for him this time. I would guess that next time he goes out, he will go out and do some more religious service because that's usually how it goes. Lose big, religious service. Sometimes it works. In this case, didn't really. He also spends a little bit of his domain turn because he had to catch up on that, trying to agitate Hellscapa. If you aren't really aware of what where we are, so Hellscapa, Oop, one second. So we're here, we're these three countries now. We took out that one, these two rulers, one being Brindis got married, and now they rule this together. This is Hellscapa right here. We want to unite the highlands, like that is Brindis's thing. So we're trying to have a summit. Hellscapa is not interested because the Siren, who has territory just below them, is coming. So. We're trying to agitate them so it's easier to make an excuse to go to war. We've tried like putting troops on the border. It's not working out, but I'm sure if we work hard enough, it'll happen. And then he also decides to level up his temple. He is successful and so now he has a level three holding in his temple. And so now that that's kind of dealt with, it's time to figure out what the heck is going on with the tension in the court. There's a lot of things going on. So Burn, he's like the military guy. He's like, hey, look at these cool troops that I trained up. You now have more house carls, which is hilarious because Brindis just decommissioned a bunch of troops because she's like, the army is costing too much. So yeah, now it can cost a little bit more. And they're pretty cool. They're called the King's Foot, which we think is really funny. And we made super a lot of fun of that. But then also Haldir, who kind of runs the financial and uh, diplomatic side of things, he's not really happy about this because he just sees it as Burn trying to solve everything with war. He also brings up to Brindis that there's a tax discrepancy or a money discrepancy. There's a couple gold bars that are missing and he highly suspects the captain of the King's Foot that she was responsible for that. As we kind of go through that month, so this is our domain turn month. This is what's happening on the side. As we go through that, you know, Einar, who's the Queen's Guard, comes up to Val and like, here's a very nice sword for you. And then somebody approaches Renalfer and they're like, hey, here's this really cool book on taxations. All that like weird stuff, Roz ends up getting like a gold tipped quill and a gold ink pot and Rainier gets a horse. So they're, it's like two factions and they're both fighting for our favor. So you've got the scholars that are going after Renalfer and Roz and then you have the more military people that are going after Val and Rainier. There's just a lot of stuff going on and then we hear word that there's going to be some spies outside the castle, like somebody's gonna let a spy in. And so the guards are going after that, so we decide to take long as well, which is probably a good thing because the person that is there is alone, and it's Selma, who is a scribe of Haldir, and she's saying, somebody told me to come here because they had information about something related to the embezzlement, the missing, the missing gold bars. And the guards are like, well, she's just saying that. So we get in the middle of this situation. And as it turns out, there's a massive infighting between these people, the scribes, and the military. And while there was no luck had the first time that Haldir brought out the books and was like, hey, here's the problem. With Renalfer's help, Roz went over the books again and was able to determine that it was just a calculation error that saw this money missing. But because everything's so tense, 
Helder was so quick to blame the army because they're just they're not getting along at all. The next day, as we're like getting ready to take petitioners, Haldir straight up says that the lady who is in charge of the King's Foot, Lady Bronin, tried to get one of his arrested. And so they're just pandemonium breaks out. We kick everybody out except for the people that we think need to be there, the you know, the people that are involved in this. So Haldir stays, Byrne stays, Einar stays, Lady Bronin stays, and then Selma the scribe stays as well, because we need to get down to the bottom of this. After a lot of chit chat and some fighting and arguments and all that fun stuff, we <laughs> determine that the best way to resolve this so that the country can get back to operating normally is with a home gang. And if you don't know what a home gang is, it's basically you challenge someone to a fight for honor. It can be a fight to the death, it cannot be a fight to the death, whatever. But obviously we're not gonna have Burn, who's in charge of the military, fighting Haldir, the like old man scribe. So they're gonna pick champions. And so the military side picks Val as a champion and the scribe side picks Renolfer because I mean that's that's the best bet between Renolfer and Roz. Renolfer is going to be a better option. So away we go to Storm Holton's tournament grounds. Renolfer obviously likes gambling and he won't miss an opportunity so he gambles on himself and Rainier's like hey that's my tribesman so he also places a wager on him. They both lose their money because Val destroys Renolfer. But it's cool now because everything is back to normal. We don't have to worry about it. There might still be a little bit of tension but they'll get back to work and running the country without just getting super mad at each other. After that is resolved, our month of domain turns is over, and so we decide to head up to Arvald to see why Rainier couldn't level up his holding. Because like I mentioned in a previous session, he tried to level up his lodge and it didn't work. So we get up there and we decide to go to the lodge first and it is just covered in like this giant white tent. Kind of looks like a fumigation tent, I would imagine. So we're like, do we go in or do we go to the town? So we decide to go to the town and thus begins like the most ridiculousness ever. So we question people and they're like, oh yeah, there was a weird smell and then the tent went up. We thought you put the tent up, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, why wouldn't you check why there's a tent up? And they're like, well, it's none of our business on and on and on and on and on. We can't find anybody who knows what's going on. We go to the temple and they're like, yeah, the hunters have stopped coming around. We go to Storm Holton's slaughterhouse that he has up there because normally they get the meat and they're like, yeah, we haven't been getting meat for a while. What's up? Like we got a business arrangement here. And so finally we are just screw it. We go back up to the lodge and Rainier's like, we're taking this tent down. And we're like, is that really the best idea? But down it comes and it just smells like decay and poison and gross and nobody wants to be in there. This is probably why nobody's come around to check it. So Rainier goes first, he opens the door. And once he opens the door, a light clicks on in the distance. And here is Nolan Terrell, the Scourge. If you remember the last time we dealt with the Scourge, I believe was at Val's shipyard. And um, he had poisoned a bunch of people there. She sliced off his head with Frostbreaker. We put the body on a funeral pyre, lit it on fire. It didn't really burn and then it just kind of disappeared. So we knew this was coming. We would got a letter from him saying, hey, come visit us. Well, he's mad that we didn't come visit him. He's like, obviously you only care to pay attention to me if I'm messing with your holding. So here I am messing with your holding. We pretty immediately start this fight. <laughs> And Renolfer goes first, hits him, and then he's starting to head around the outside perimeter of the room because he wants to get to the back to put up like this guardian thing. But Val goes, and Val gets a crit with Frostbreaker, and what do you know? Val chops off his head again, which we know doesn't kill him. We 100% know that this does not kill this stupid scourge. We need to do research on how to kill him and keep him dead. So we try various different things, like putting him in a cage and burning his body and keeping his head separate and it's, it's not going well. We do, however, also heal all the hunters that were in the lodge because that decay smell you could smell, the death smell, it was a bunch of hunters. Fortunately, Renolfer was able to kind of heal them all back up, so it's all good. And then here's where it gets funny. Do you remember when Rainier was getting so mad that nobody was checking on the tent? So his guy that's in charge, he's like, yeah, I came up and there was this tent, so I went to check on it. And Rainier's like, don't, if you see a tent, don't check on it. Rainier, you can't have it both ways. You either check on the tent or you don't. So basically it's like, if you see a tent again or something weird, just raven me. It's like, send me a raven, I'll come up and deal with it. But it was pretty funny after all that time of why did you do anything was don't do anything. Why would you do anything? So again, we can't really do anything with the body of Nolan Terrell right now. So we cut it up a little bit more and we bury the body in various parts 
around the lodge and around the city and then we decide to have a long rest because why not? Brindis goes out and does some carousing. Rainier does the same, but with Freeman, because he wants Freeman to come to his lodge. He's trying to corner the market there, I guess. Roz then completes her armor proficiency training, so she can now wear armor, which is so great, because the AC was 13, and now it's 15. That's, that's amazing. But there's a bit of a complication, and she finds out that the guy that has been training her is a criminal. And she's like, listen, nope, I don't care. Val goes off and does some bounty hunting and she catches this guy and I'm like, oh frick, like I said I wouldn't say anything and I didn't say anything, but she still caught him. And then it turns out that he had designs to go kill the manager of Rainier's Hunting Lodge, so it's probably a really good thing that Val caught him. And um, Roz was like, whew, that was close, maybe I should have said something. Remember how Renolfer on his last long rest went gambling and lost a bunch of money and I said, hey, maybe he should do some religious service? Yeah, he didn't, he decided to go gambling and lost even worse than before. So, that sucks. <laughs> and then, you know, we decide it's time to leave the town, and before we leave, we check on the body of the Scourge, we dig up its head, and it's growing a spine out of its head. So we're like, well, I don't really know what to do with that, so we just buried it deeper, and we left. Not our problem right now, definitely our problem later. We decide to head off to Val's shipyard because if you remember, I think a couple sessions ago on her domain turn, she was working on learning navigational tools for boats, marine navigational tools, and Valley, who is her trainer, was super distracted. So she wanted to go see, like, check in on him, see if he's all right. Well, when we get there, there's like this deep knife cut in the door, like an X. And he's like, I know that's the mark of Cassius, this really dreaded pirate, he's coming for me. Like, he was an enemy that I made, and now he wants to make good on the promise that he probably made to murder me a while ago. So, that's why I'm a little bit distracted. He's gonna be coming at, like, this half moon. So, we decide to take them on the beach rather than have them come into the shipyard. And the first thing Renolfer wants to do is build a door. So we build a door on the beach because he can challenge this guy to door court. And if he wins, then he basically just has to leave. Night comes and this ship starts to rise from the sea. And then from it comes Cassius. And Renolfer tried really hard to get him to come to the door and he almost did. And then he was like, no, no, Valley's more important. I want to go kill this guy. This guy is, he's a dreaded pirate for a reason. And with his first attack, he puts like 80 hit points of damage into Brindis, but fortunately she has this cool like ice shield chrysalis that she can put around her, which takes like all the damage and she's fine. The only downside is on her next turn, she just has to basically defrost and loses a turn, but worth it to not die in one blow, I think. Yeah, and he's like really creepy and really hard to put damage into, but eventually, very fittingly, at the end of the day, Val is the one who takes him down and now Valley is safe. He can continue on with the shipyard and his work and not have to watch over his back for this dreaded pirate to come after him. And with that, that is the end of the session. And so we just kind of go back up to the shipyard, chill, relax, have a good time, no threat. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe so you know when I post the next one. And with that, I will see you next time.